Welcome back guys. In our last video, we looked at the two leading firmwares and the winner of the poll of course was Unleashed. I am however now on Extreme and want to explore more the applications that are available within that firmware. One that caught my eye was the bad KB or bad USB slash Bluetooth. Now, as you may know, Bluetooth has been around for a pretty long time, established in early 90s by Ericsson and then developed into a more standardized protocol as time went on. Bluetooth, as we know, uses radio waves. Now this transmits data between devices and typically operates within the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. It supports a wide range of data transfer rates, but depends on the specific version of Bluetooth that's being used. Now, one key feature of Bluetooth is the ability to establish connections between devices automatically without requiring user intervention. This can be a downfall for the protocol and has been exposed in the past with bad actors pairing on devices. Now this pairing is typically involves a process where one device sends a request to connect and the other device responds with a pass key or some other form of authentication. Once the devices are paired, they can communicate with each other securely and efficiently in a one-to-one -one communication basis. Now having said that, if we head over to our Flipper Zero now and we check out the application that is available to us, which is of course the bad KB. Now, in order to establish the bad KB, first of all, you need to disconnect the flipper from the PC. So once I disconnect this and we bring up our Bluetooth settings, you can see here I have a pair of headphones that are paired under the name Ace. Now then, if we go under bad KB once more on the device itself, we can pick a deployment that we want to use. Now we have the default ones provided by Clara and the team already, but I have a Matrix one and obviously a Ricky Roll. So let's go for the Rick. Now at this stage, you can't connect right away. You have to go to configure on the left. Now, under connection, you have two types of connections. You can have USB connections or you can have a Bluetooth connection. Now, if you have remember that it's on, you can't actually change the Mac or device name. So here in this instance, we can take remember as off. Now you can have a device name display. Now, for this instance, if I just call this Ace and I can show you the way that we can display this. Let's call it Ace One just to stop any confusion. And I save it here. Also, we can manipulate the MAC address of this Bluetooth to masquerade as a different type of address, or if you've already established a MAC address for a device that is trusted, then you can expose that here as well. I'll leave it as the default for now. And also you can change the keyboard layout to various types of keyboards around the world. Next, if we hit run on this, something interesting is going to happen. So if we hit run, now if we head over to the screen and we scan for devices, you can see here we have ACE1. And from the icons, it's showing as either a screen type or a sort of speaker. So if we connect to that, now here, this could be an issue in terms of actually exploiting the Bluetooth capability in terms of the bad KB. Now it's gonna ask you, like I mentioned earlier, a pairing. Now this pairing is needed in order to even communicate between the two devices. If I hit connect, then the two devices will pair together and then I can potentially deploy a payload. Now, in terms of challenges, this Bluetooth pairing process typically requires authentication. Now, how are you gonna get a victim in this case to hit connect? The only way I could envision it at this moment in time is that if this device name 
is something that is commonly known with either within a household such as a internet thing device a camera or some sort of speaker outside of the realm of being those sorts of connections and devices i can't see anyone just hitting connect here unless they're just not paying attention to what's going on but nevertheless let's hit connect and see what can happen so if we hit connect and there we have it it's connected now then we get first of all the power of the device that's been connected and as you can see here it's actually been connected as a hid device in this case a keyboard so immediately that could be a red flag in terms of what sort of device you just connected if you were expecting an audio device you would expect to appear it here whereas it's appeared as a mouse keyboard or pen so that's kind of look first flag if you're trying to see what you just connected to your PC. Now you could instantly remove this, but if it was a bad actor at this point in time, they would have probably deployed the payload already. So in this case, let's deploy the payload and see exactly how quickly it can happen. Now, if we deploy a basic Windows payload just to demo what this could look like, now you can see it's ran notepad it's just typing uh, a predefined script and there you have it so there's the deployment phase of what the bad kb can do using a ducky based script now if you can head over to a repo such as ubers or jacobi's you can have a plethora of payloads and bad fun as it were in terms of what you can deploy this was just a proof of concept to show you, first of all, how fantastic and scary at the same time this attack type can be, not only on a Windows operating system, but any system that can accept Bluetooth connectivity. Conclusion. So that was the bad KB or bad Bluetooth device by Clara Casey and the team on the Extreme Flipper firmware. Now, overall, the Bad KB app on the Flipper Zero, as demonstrated, has been significantly developed and can pose a valid threat in the realm of Bluetooth attacks. As with any tool, it's important that it's used ethically and responsibly and you test on hardware that belongs to you. Nevertheless, the Bad KB app that we saw enables a incredibly useful feature especially when it comes to the realm of social engineering i love the spoofing of name ability for the mac uh, addresses on devices and as we saw once a pairing is executed payload options are a dime a dozen so if you haven't already check out the firmware check out the applications involved and I'm going to keep my eye on even more developments in that realm of the FAPs and applications and keep you updated. That was the ACE. Stay safe in the cyberspace. And peace out.